Hello and welcome to Praying Parents, a half hour segment in which we intercede for children, local youth, and their schools, teachers, and staff. Uh, today, I would like to welcome Reverend Tony Hubbard, uh, who has a, a couple of ministries in the Steubenville, Ohio area. Hello, Reverend Hubbard, and how are you today? Oh, beautiful, and I'd like to thank you um, for asking me to be part of this great radio station, and I'm blessed. I'm thank blessed you. This well, I am so blessed and, and happy and grateful that you're here. Um, I've been really an admirer of yours for uh, a couple of years, actually, ever since I first um, attended the uh, Mission Rejoice oh. event, weekly yeah. event down at the Urban Mission where you witness the gospel and, and uh, feed sometimes 20, 30 yes. people, and you actually go house to house and pick them up yes. to bring them to the mission to feed them Saturday <laughs> yes, night do. family dinner. <laughs> it's yes. wonderful, wonderful. Yes. And sometimes you have musicians come and play mm -hmm. for them, yes, or, or you play a positive movie for them. It's yes. just, it is a great Saturday night event. And as far as I know, it's the only weekly Saturday night event and it's fun yes it is it's fun it's, it's fun. great it's, it's really Christians great have fun. we do <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, bring that to the listeners so they have a little yes. bit of a background about who mm -hmm. you know uh, who you are and the wonderful things that you do and um, and also the way that you have been interceding for people uh, over over the years yes. and in putting that intercession into action uh, so really what I would love to talk with you about this half half hour is really to focus on your intercessory um, yes. prayer and how you stand in the gap for mm -hmm. uh, people in need especially the young yes. so my dear listeners uh, will be following mm -hmm. the format this half half hour where we're, we're going to talk about adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication, which makes up the acronym ACTS, just to help you um, get comfortable with talking to our Lord in a conversational manner, but in a way that's been tried and tested by other people interceding over the years um, to make it more comfortable. So I would like to open with a period of adoration. And uh, so I'm going to open, and then Reverend Tony, I'm going to ask you at the end of our, toward the end of our half hour, to yes. uh, close for us in prayer. Yes, we do. Um, so let's let's seek the Lord. Yes, Father, we we thank you and we praise you because mm. you are generous. Yes. Father God, you bestow abundant blessings and provi provision on all that you have made. You are liberal in giving to all that you have made. Lord, Deuteronomy 2, 7 uh, reminds us, and we praise you because you have blessed us in all the work of our hands. You have watched over our journey through this vast, vast desert. And Lord, we praise you through Psalm 65, where because Lord, you are our Father. You care for our land. You water it. Mm -hmm. You enrich our land abundantly. Oh, Lord God, your streams are filled with water, and you provide people with grain because you have pre-planned this. You've ordained this. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you because you drench the furrows in our fields. You level our ridges. You soften our fields, and you shower them and bless them with crops. Lord, we praise you because you crown our years with your bounty and our carts overflow with abundance because of your generosity, Lord. Even the grasslands, even the deserts, you bring food to those dry and barren places, Lord. We praise you because you cover the meadows with flocks, you cover the valleys with grain, and Lord, we shout for joy to you and we sing to you, Lord. Thank you for being so generous and loving us so much. As in John 3:16, you loved us, our world, so much that you gave your only begotten Son, 
so that whoever believed in Jesus would not perish but enjoy eternal life with you through him. And Lord, through John 10.10, 10, we praise you because even though the thief may come to steal and kill and destroy, you have come, mm. O oh Jesus, that we may have life in you and have it to all its fullness. Yes. And finally, O oh Lord God, I praise you and I lift you up because you did not spare your own son, Jesus. Mm. But as it says in Romans 8, 32, you gave Jesus up for us all. And how yes. therefore will you, our Father, not also, not also along with Jesus, mm -hmm. you will also graciously give us all things because you've already given us your most precious son. Yes. So thank you, Lord, for being so generous, being a father, our provider and showering us abundantly mm -hmm. with with your gifts and with your blessings from your your storehouse yes, Jesus. amen mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. our lord is indeed worthy of praise and um i guess one of the things that i find wonderful about what you do is you you really model god's generosity to the people in steubenville by providing for them that meal once a week and they can just come and be fed and welcomed and warmly warmly cared for for that yes. two three hour span mm -hmm. what was it that brought you to 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 give and give and give every saturday you know um well let me first tell you somewhat about myself um I received the Lord uh, when I was about 31. Oh, okay. I was a oh. young woman, um, had a family, um, husband, and <clears throat> just was searching myself for more. Um, not that I, my husband was a good man and was married 47 years before he passed away, so he provided, but I needed something more. I needed Christ to come into my life. And so by doing these things, it's searching. Um, as a child, I, I went to church, I went to Sunday school. My father was a deacon. Uh, my mother was a woman of God. And, and so there was some Christian teaching in my life. Mm -hmm. I accepted Christ when I was at the age of 12, but um, they didn't know the details, didn't know the relationship that mm -hmm. I needed to have with him and coming up through the teens and doing the things that the teens did and you know as 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 the worldly idea of becoming grown okay? yeah and so um, married um, at a young age of 18 um, to my husband um, life seemed to get rougher for me I wasn't getting what I wanted and so through those years uh, a child in tribulations, I knew that knew I needed a closer relationship with God. And so by seeking him, um, I went into drugs. I, I, I went into the drug Aww. scene, uh, starting off with prescription drugs. Aww. And so by doing that, it led me into a deeper relationship with drugs. But yeah. um, after many, 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 many years of searching and trying to find this peace, um, I knew I needed God in my life. And so yeah. I received him. I could tell you the exact day, the exact time. It was in uh -huh. June on a summer morning, um, about a week after Father's Day. Um, I fell on my knees and cried out to God with everything that I had. Um, I just released all the sin and darkness and as I cried out to him uh, my children honestly could have been in the street hauling for help but at that precise time I was calling to Jesus to help me and when I got to the point that I was totally empty of everything that I ever done everything I ever thought to do God showed me my sins and it was black as black could be. And I got to the point, 
I had was on the phone with the 700 Club. Oh, and so wonderful. as the woman was praying for me, her name was Donna, i never forget, because that's my daughter's name. Oh. And so as I gripped the phone, the more I gripped, the more I bared down. If any woman had, has had experience with birthing a child, this is what I was going through. And when I got to the point that everything in me has emptied out, God showed me my sins. And when I cried out to him again, I gripped the phone, everything I had, and I began to speak in the heavenly language. Oh, and I saw Christ beautiful. with his hands reached out to me, welcome this wavered child back home. That was the beginning oh. of my true relationship with Christ. And so from that day up until this day, not that I've been perfectly, but I know God has called me into this type of a ministry. And this type of a ministry that I do do is, is because one reason my daughter, who had suffered with drugs for over 25 years, crying out to God for her, um, walking the streets looking for her, going into the enemy camp, and that means knocking on doors, because I had a child out there that I had to go in and take out of the enemy camp. And with that, um, working every day, um, I just began to have a relationship with the people on the street. And I knew that there was a ministry that God wanted me to be involved in. I didn't know what it was. And being a woman in the ministry was not an easy haul to do. I had a lot of yes. doors uh, shut in my face, and I had people telling me uh, that God don't call women to ministry. But I knew God had called me, and it was nothing, nothing was going to turn me away from what God had called me into. And so with that, driving the city bus for many, many years, um, I had to give that up because of health reason. Oh. And so with that, uh, one day, um, Urban Mission had a, a, a beautiful affair back to school. And I went there and with my oh. baby granddaughter. Um, well, she's grown now, of course, but seeing the atmosphere, seeing the love and the compassion that the urban mission had for the people. I want to be part of that. And so I spoke to the uh, a lady there who was the head of the mission. Um, Mrs. Woods was her name. And uh, she told me she needed a cook. And well, that was not my idea of God's ministry, believe me, <laughs> not cooking. Uh, and so uh, my, my um, idea was only going to be there for a couple of weeks until I found another job. But during that time, the few weeks that I was there, I asked God, why am I here? What is it that you want me to do? And, the first time that I stepped out after preparing the meal in the kitchen, I stepped out on the floor, I saw such dis dysfunctioning. I looked into the people's eyes and I saw that they sat beside each other, but they really did not know each other. And so after praying and asking God what to do, he said, name it the Unity Kitchen. Oh, Drop the oh, Soup yes. Kitchen. Because unity is bringing everyone together. And, that, and that's why it is called the Unity Kitchen to this day. Oh, yes. That's a great name. Yes, it, it is. is. I love that. I and love so I had too. some time of trying to get people away from using Soup Kitchen. But with all of that, this is why I, God just brought me into this ministry. Then seeing the women on the streets. Um, and seeing them coming in hungry and, and dirty and had not slept all night, um, sleeping in abandoned housing, you know, my heart began to melt. And so I remember one day standing in the kitchen 
of the Unity Kitchen. And I said, God, what is it about this that you want me here? And I can remember as it happened right now, God told me that I had pride. And he like, I, it was so strong, his presence came over me. I just like went backwards. And I raised up again, I said, pride. He said, yes, and I'm gonna break it. And I couldn't understand the pride that he was talking about, because I never had much. I mean, my father was a laborer, so, you know, just a normal education. So I didn't see what the pride I had in me. And it wasn't that pride, but it was a pride of humbling myself before God and allow him to use me as he so chose to use me. And so I found myself ministering to the prostitutes on the streets. I found myself hugging the dirtiest, the smelliest. I found myself wiping tears from their eyes and I found myself taking them out to lunch just to be able to say that they had a good meal. So all of this here led me into the ministry where I'm at today. That's such a beautiful journey. Oh my goodness. Yes. yes. Yeah. And and that um, that ability that you have to relate to people and to speak words of life. Yes. Uh, it's, it's really, it really is powerful and yes. wonderful. The way you can talk to people uh, who come from a variety of, of levels and backgrounds and from particular situations of de distress or depression or deprivement. Yes. Uh, I, I've just seen you speak in a way that really does heal and raise up and yeah, it's it's just beautiful. It's just Thanks. beautiful to watch you teach while the people God come. And, and, and I mean, God has opened the doors of the Jefferson County Jail. So oh, I go wonderful. there and minister to the women there on Saturdays wow. uh, in the morning time. And they just so delight. Oh, they just, you know, and each one, because, you know, in the jail system, you're not allowed to reach out and hug. But oh. each one that comes into the classroom, it hugs me. I, yes. I, and I tell yes. them, it's not as much for them as it is for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a huggy person. And yeah. so those hugs that I receive from those women just encourage me as much as I encourage them. How beautiful. That is really, really beautiful. Wow. All the glory goes to God. Amen. All the glory. Amen. How wonderful. Well, I am just thrilled that you're here and you're sharing part of your story and your ministry with us. Uh, my dear listeners, I'd like to take this time for us to pause now for a time of, of contrition before we go into thanksgiving and supplication. So I just invite you now to silently, uh, and I'll do the same, we'll silently confess our sins to the God who forgives. Because... If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's 1 John 1, 9. So let's take the, this 30 seconds to pray and, and confess to our God. Hello and welcome back to Bring Parents. Uh, I'm Pamela Shea, your host, and our guest today is Reverend Tony Hubbard, uh, who runs uh, a, um, 
a number of ministries, actually. Uh, but one of them is uh, Mission Rejoice in Steubenville, Ohio. And uh, Reverend Tony, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, during this, la this uh, final portion of our, our talk, our time together, I'd just like to uh, talk about really thanking our God for what he has done because in First Thessalonians, we're reminded in everything, give thanks for this is God's will for us in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. So, um, Reverend Tony, are there any anecdotes or answers to prayer that you remember when you interceded for a young person and, and God answered that prayer in a way that was clearly uh, of the Lord? Yes, yeah, sitting here, um, just going, let me just tell you of one uh, recently. Thank um, you. Yesterday, no, yeah, Friday, I um, went to the mission and um, standing outside of the mission, this young lady um, was walking up towards me. I don't even know if she even saw me standing there because her head was down and, um, and she just looked so worn and beaten down. And I, I said, hello. And she stopped and she looked. She said, hi. I said, what's your name? She gave me her name. And, um, and she said, thank you for not saying mean things to me. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I would never say anything mean to you. And so, she began to tell me a little bit about her story. And uh, she said she was walking for food. I invited her to come to Mission Rejoice uh, at five o'clock. And so, um, and I told her, I said, well, I understand what you're doing. I said, I know you're out here walking to, to relieve your pain, I told her. And she began to tell me how she had been beaten um, by ex-husband. She proceeded to tell me uh, that she had had several surgeries. And um, as she was telling me, she told me, um, I hope this don't grow you out. And I thought she was perhaps was going to show me a scar, but she showed me a colostomy bag on her side. Oh, poor lady. And it uh -huh. broke my heart to know that she was still out walking the street to supply her needs. And um, I prayed with her and held her hand. And by holding her hand, and after we got through praying, um, she felt such a relief. Um, and I told her we would be looking for her to come back, but fortunately, she didn't return Saturday. But going through her family, I found out that I know her father and know her brother. And, and it was a hurting thing to see her there, not wanting to be there, but thinking that was the only place that she could get something to eat. And so I have prayed with many women on the streets such as that. Um, and, and I could go back to even praying for my daughter of 25 years of being addicted to crack cocaine. There was many times when I didn't believe that God even heard my prayers. But just like it has in the Bible, when um, was it Jacob, uh, yes. Israel, how he prayed. Um, for 21 days and, and familiar with the scripture off the top of my head, um, the enemy, as soon as the prayer left Jacob's mouth, God was sending the answer right then. God said that he is quicker than the zigzag lightning. It's not that the prayers are not being heard. It's not that the prayers and the answers are on its way. 
It is that if we go continue to pray for our loved ones, and the enemy want us to think that our prayers is not getting through, I'm here to tell you, our prayers are getting through to God. He said that he hears our cries. He feels our heartaches. He knows what it is that we're going through. This is one reason of many that he wrapped himself up in human flesh and came down through 42 generations so he could understand what we're going through each and every day. You know, I could imagine how Christ must have felt when he asked his disciples to pray with him just for a little while. And he went further on into Garden of Gethsemane, and he began to cry out to God. He said, if there was any way, if there was any way that this bitter cup could pass from me, Lord. But then he goes to realize that it's not his will, but it's God's will. And so we have to realize that we're going to have to take on the bitter cups for our loved ones. But believe what I say from a mother, from a minister who have prayed for many years. And now I'm starting to see the tide is turning for your, your loved one. And believe me, there's a woman out there who's praying for her daughter right now, who wants to give up, but don't give up. Press in and press on because God is going to answer your prayer. It's already answered. Begin to thank him and begin to praise him that it is coming. It's on its way. And I know that to be the truth. Absolutely. Well, you speak the truth with so much love and so much conviction. Um, Reverend Tony, I'd really love to invite you to continue this conversation with me. Yes. Uh, so I have to conclude this this episode and and continue because we just we just we're just getting started <laughs> here. So thank you, my dear listeners, uh, for joining me with Praying Parents uh, with our guest, Reverend Tony Hubbard of Mission Rejoice in Steubenville, Ohio. And I'm your host, Pamela Shea. We'll see you next time. Thank you, and God bless.